Hello, my name is Joshua Carloni. I'm the lobster biologist with New Hampshire Fish and Game. We put this video together as a guide to help observers better determine the egg stages for lobsters they'll encounter while in the field. Just as some background information, in the Gulf of Maine, lobsters generally extrude eggs from late summer through the fall. A female lobster will carry eggs under her abdomen for 9 to 12 months, and hatching occurs the following year in early to mid-summer months. So a female will extrude eggs in year A, She'll carry those eggs throughout the winter, and as the water's warm in the spring and early summer, those eggs will begin to hatch. In the Gulf of Maine, this typically takes place in June and July. This is highly dependent on temperature, and so the timing of these events will vary depending upon geographic location. When a female lobster first extrudes her eggs, they're a greenish color. Sometimes fishermen refer to them as black eggers. If you look closely at these eggs, they lack eye spots and are uniform in color. As you can see, there's some variability, but the major characteristics you want to look for in the field are a green to dark green color that's very uniform. The next stage you'll be asked to ID in the field is eyed eggs. Some states, including New Hampshire, split eyed eggs into three different developmental stages. This helps to determine the time until they hatch, but it'll also add some complexity to field ID. You won't be asked to do this in the field, but I think it'll be very useful for you to see the three stages so you have a better idea of the maturity of the eggs that you're going to be asked to ID. Early developmental stage eyed eggs look similar to newly extruded eggs as they're a similar color with a couple important differences. Early eyed eggs take on a two-tone color and if you look closely you can see little black specks which are actually eyes. A grayish green appearance may be noticeable as you look at these eggs from a distance. Generally, you'll see these eggs in the fall of the year before they're going to hatch. So in general, you'll see these eggs in September, October, and possibly even November and December. The mid-developmental stage eyed eggs take on almost a purple appearance. Some may say dark green and grayish, but oftentimes to me, they appear purple. These eggs are also definable by their large eye spots, which are turquoise in color. Generally, you'll see these eggs late in the season, the year before they're going to hatch or early in the season in the year in which they're going to hatch. The late developmental stage eyed eggs will be the last of the eyed egg category. These eggs take on a brownish reddish color and have large turquoise eyes. You will only see these eggs in the year in which they're going to hatch. Once eggs get to this stage it won't be long before hatching begins. You may also see a slight blue tinge to some of the eggs which is indicative that they will hatch in the very near future. As I said before, for your purposes, you'll just need to determine if the eggs have eyes. So if the eggs you're observing are one of the three stages of eyed eggs that I just described, you'll just note them in the general eyed egg category. Just as a little background on the hatching and release stage that you'll be asked to ID in the field. The eggs will actually hatch while still attached to the female and are considered pre-larvae at this stage. Without getting into too much detail, the female will then stand erect on the tip of her walking legs, raise her abdomen high off the substrate, and rapidly flutter her pleopods to encourage egg hatch, molt of the pre-larvae, and to release larvae into the water column. Since eggs will all develop at a different rate, the eggs don't all hatch at the same time, and thus release of the larvae can take place over several days or even longer depending upon temperature. This stage can be quite variable in appearance. But as you can see from the images, there are a few important characteristics that you'll be looking for in the field. You'll notice that the eggs and pre-larvae attached to the abdomen take on a blue color. You may see this blue tinge in some of the really late stage eyed eggs as well, but the difference here is that you want to look for evidence that the female has actually released hatched eggs as larvae. This will be evident by a furry substance, which is a combination of egg casings and cementum left over from larvae that have already been released. Again, there's some overlap between these stages and samplers are just asked to do the best they can. In New Hampshire, we will code eggers as hatching if we see any evidence of release of larvae. The final stage you'll be asked to ID is the spent egger stage. This is identifiable by what is often described as a furry abdomen. This is a cementum which remains attached to the CT after the eggs have hatched and been released. Don't be fooled into thinking that every egger is a spent egger. It helps to look at a spent egger next to a female that hasn't recently carried eggs. Also, when in doubt, 
Try to see if you can pull any of the cemental material off of the CT. If so, you can assume it is a spent agar. These are the egg stages you'll be asked to ID in the field. If you have any further questions whatsoever, feel free to contact me by phone or email. Good luck and have fun out on the water.